Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this recipe, I'll show you how to make this delicious but very simple to do chocolate sandwich cake. And to make it extra special, I'll be covering it in this smooth and silky but very easy to make luxurious chocolate ganache. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Start the recipe by adding the softened butter to a large bowl. You should be able to gently press the butter to leave a fingerprint in it. Now add the caster sugar to the bowl. Using a spatula, cream these two together until it goes pale in colour. In real time, this should take around 3-4 to four minutes. Now take your room temperature eggs and this time using a whisk beat them in one at a time. If you try to add them all at once the mix will probably split. Not the end of the world mind but it will make the cake denser. Also if you use eggs straight from the fridge that will also cause it to split. I normally take mine out of the fridge the night before I'm going to bake this cake. If you do forget to take them out of the fridge the night before, there is a hack. You can put them in hot water, not boiling or anything, just hot water from the tap and let them sit there for about 30 minutes. Right, that's about the hardest part of this recipe done. Time to add the dry ingredients. Suspend a fine sieve above the bowl. Now I'm using self-raising flour for this recipe, which already contains some baking powder. If you're using plain, also known as all-purpose flour, you'll need to add an extra 2 teaspoons of baking powder to the recipe, making a total of 3 teaspoons of baking powder altogether. Now add your cocoa powder to the sieve, followed by the salt. The final dry ingredient is the teaspoon of baking powder. Now sift that through. If there are any lumps, just push them through with your fingers. The last of the wet ingredients are the milk and the vanilla extract. Just mix those together and add them to the bowl. And if you're interested in making your own vanilla extract, there is a video on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. Now, using your spatula once again, fold it all together gently until you have a nice smooth chocolate cake batter. And how easy was that everyone? That final mix in real time only took about 2 minutes. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. For this recipe you'll need to grease and line the bottom of two sandwich cake tins with parchment paper. The dimensions of the tins that I'm using are on screen. If your measurements were correct at the beginning, you should have around 900 grams, that's 32 ounces of butter. You may have a variation of 10 to 20 grams either way, but don't worry, that will be due to the size of the eggs that you used. So, divide that equally between the two tins. You can eyeball this, but it's much better to use your scales and get it exact. And as you can see, mine is working out at 446 grams in each tin. Now spread the butter out and level it off. I like to use the back of a dessert spoon for mine. Just get it somewhere near level. It will level itself out in the oven. Once that's done, give the tins a good sharp slap on the bench. That'll get rid of any of the larger air bubbles. Right, that's it. Now they're ready to bake. So, get them into your preheated oven and set your timer for 25 minutes. And while that's baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. 
and also book 4 in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Now on to making the chocolate ganache. And this is a very simple process and it only contains two ingredients, chocolate and cream. Break your chocolate into a bowl. I'm using half milk and half dark chocolate, but you can use whatever combination of chocolate you prefer. Right, onto the cream. Add 300 ml of double or heavy cream to a small saucepan and get it onto a low to medium heat. Now keep stirring it so it doesn't catch on the bottom. Once you see small bubbles appear in the cream, and this will happen just before it starts to boil, get it off the heat. Now pour it straight over the chocolate pieces in the bowl. Let it sit for 30 seconds or so. Once you're confident the chocolate has melted, gently stir it using a spatula until you have a smooth and silky chocolate mixture. Now if you're worried it looks a bit too runny to add to a cake, don't because once it's been refrigerated for a few minutes, it does eventually set pretty stiff. Now clean down the sides of the bowl. Get it covered with cling film or plastic wrap, and to do our bit for the planet, try to use this biofilm. Now get that into the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Right, time's up on the cakes in the oven. Test that they're done by inserting a cocktail stick. If the stick comes out clean, they're done. If not, let them bake for a further five minutes and test them again. Mine's done, so I'll get them out. And as you can see, they've risen very well. Now let them sit in the tins on the wire rack for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes you'll see that they've shrunk away from the edges. Now carefully turn them out. And there you go, it's come straight out. That's down to the parchment paper doing its job. Right, let them sit on the wire rack until they've completely cooled. Time to put this wonderful chocolate sandwich cake together. I'm going to use this pretty cake stand to do mine on, but a large plate will do too. Take one of the cakes and place it upside down on the stand. Make sure it's central. Now put a couple of tablespoons of a jam of your choice on the cake. I'm using this delightful sour cherry curd for mine, but like I said, use whatever you like for yours. Spread the jam out evenly, but leave it a little shy of the edges. Time to start applying the ganache. Once it's been in the fridge for around 30 minutes, it should be the right consistency to apply to the cake. Place about a quarter of your ganache on top of the jam. And once again, using your spatula, spread it out, but leaving it a little shy of the edges. Now carefully lining it up, place the top sponge on top of the bottom one, gently pressing it down. Right, so far so good. Now spoon the rest of the ganache into the middle of the top cake. Starting in the centre, begin spreading it out towards the edge of the cake using a spatula. Now let it flow over the edge and start applying it to the sides of the cake. Don't worry if any falls onto the stand, we can clean that up later. It should be stiff enough now to stick to the sides. Take your time and slowly work your way around it as shown. Once all the ganache is on the cake, try to even it out as much as you can. Now you can clean up any spillage from the plate or stand. First using a spatula, then some moist kitchen paper. Mm. 
To finish off the cake, I like to grate some chilled white chocolate all over the top of the cake, using a relatively fine grater. And that's it, your beautiful chocolate sandwich cake is ready to eat. Right, I'll grab a couple of shots for the thumbnail and I'll be back for a taste shortly. Right, time for a taste. And doctor's orders, I'm not supposed to have any chocolate, but I can't resist a taste of this beauty. Right, I'll cut a slice off, and doesn't that look absolutely amazing? Soft, light as a feather, and moist. You can eat this just the way it is with a nice cup of coffee or tea, or you can pour some cream over it and make it extra special. Either way, it's an amazing rich chocolate sandwich cake the whole family will enjoy. And oh yes, it is absolutely delicious. And I promise whoever is lucky enough to get a piece of this cake will give you a massive thumbs up guys. Definitely a keeper. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You Button supporters. And they are Stephen Elliott, Thomas O'Neill, John Nelson, Jonathan Shaw, Mona Sanderlin, Carol Pingle, Marcus Fritz, Angelica Riffle, Chris McKinnon, Agus Bjorgvinson, Joe Canty, Duke Cappen Dunn, Jennifer Macmillan 9518, Wild Will Weaver, James K3250, User-QS7PD2HC3K, Sue Devereaux 2751, Vicky Ann and Gerard McLernan 8149. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.